There are many ancient areas which we often cover, which you, the viewer, will clearly realize is of a controversial nature, especially regarding dates in which we claim are actively being denied and concealed by powerful and wealthy academic institutions. Many ancient relics within, and the fact that these, what we claim are lost antiquities, are often dated by us merely through logical processes of deduction, are therein dated far before the officially guarded modern development of man, or the path thereof. My work is actively denied, and regardless of the mountain, and still mounting volumes of evidence we present, still denied as having ever existed. Funding refused en masse in regards to any consideration whatsoever possible officially. Thus any claim in any form of a highly advanced civilization except our own ever occurring here on Earth before will always be denied. Civilization so old, their ruins now easily dismissed by geologists the world over as natural formations. However, thanks to the fact that nature rarely builds walls and courses, or create enormous megalithic walls of equal sizes built in techniques akin to the modern house brick, yet with bricks often many hundreds, sometimes thousands of tons in weight, and all once seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another. And thanks to these clear factual elements, which can allow us to identify the artificial nature of many formations claimed as geological. This evidence thankfully still being visible upon these so-called geological formations. Features which enable all with critical capacities to distinguish that of a ruin academically suppressed by being systematically dismissed as geological. Kaimanawa Wall, near Lake Taupo, New Zealand, is but one example of this massive dismissal of ancient antiquity, reluctantly explored by mainstream academia in the late 90s. However, an individual by the name of Barry Brailsfords also published an article in the New Zealand Listener, which stated, as we do, that the wall is not geological, and for a brief moment created a public exposure of mainstream archaeology and historical institutions' active refusal of the obvious in favor of the already concluded. Barry Brailsford's valiant journalism considers the possibility of a lost civilization, like one mentioned earlier and although, in his opinion, is located within permitted history, and our claim is of one far older, pre-Ice Age in fact, he still, regardless, pinned its creation on the correct parties. Titled Megalith Mystery, are giant stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park evidence of an ancient New Zealand culture? According to Brailsford's article, the stone wall is at least 2,000 years old and was created by the first settlers of New Zealand, the Waitaha. Furthermore, Brailsford also pertained to the wall being a link between New Zealand, Egypt, and South America. We feel his article is a very well-presented investigation into what is clearly an ancient ruin of artificial origin. However, we attest to the wall being a relic of a once far more advanced and much older, now lost civilization. Brailsford listed 12 pieces of evidence for its construction. For example, the fact that the visible stones in the front are a uniform 1.9 meters wide by 1.6 meters tall and 1 meter wide deep. However, politically, the view that civilizations existed in New Zealand before the Maori culture, the currently protected paradigm, is never going to be accepted. The conclusion made by the commission funded geologists, it that the formation is merely an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claim the uniform shapes were produced by conveniently identical fractures in the rock. The official line is that the Kaimanawa wall has been proclaimed a natural rock formation. And we know better than many that this tale of events is very unlikely to change in the future. Yet, regardless of this, we find the Kaimanawa wall highly compelling. Upon the shores of Lake Taupo within New Zealand is an intriguing as yet unexplained artifact that has become known as the Kaimanawa Wall. What is interesting regarding the Kaimanawa Wall is the fact that it clearly predates academia's rigidly attested view of the past inhabitations of the country. 
New Zealand is largely accepted to have first been inhabited within the last 800 years. However, the analysis that has been done on this mysterious wall has shown that it is, at very minimum, 2,000 years old. Additionally, it clearly displays the telltale construction qualities of a lost knowledge, evidently within countless other ruins found all over the world. The controversial wall first came to public attention during the early 1990s, with a publication by Barry Brailfords in the New Zealand Listener called Megalith Mystery Are Giant Stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park, Evidence of an Ancient New Zealand Culture? Within, he details how analysis has shown that the stone wall is at least two millennia old and was created by previous unknown settlers within New Zealand. He called them the Waitaha and postulated that they were subsequently exterminated by the Maoris who arrived only 800 years ago. Furthermore, Brailsford maintains that the wall could link New Zealand with Egypt, South America, and many other ancient civilizations continuing to list 12 pieces of evidence to support his claims. Predictably, however, individuals within many different fields of academia have leapt to the defense of currently upheld paradigms. The Department of Conservation, archaeologists, geologists, and just about every political party in New Zealand, including a number of media outlets, directed tremendous hostility toward the claims, leading to the site being completely shut off to the public. You have to wonder, what are they so scared of people finding? Regardless of Brailford's evidence, a conclusion that the wall is nothing but a mere natural formation has been publicly peddled ever since the publication nearly 30 years ago. A conclusion in staunch denial of reality or evidence. The conclusion made by official geologists was that the wall is an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claim that the block shapes were produced by fractures in the rock, attributed to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and other natural events. It seems scholars are quite happy to date such sites, but extremely reluctant to attribute any intelligent design within their creation. Could the Kaimanawa Wall really be a 330,000-year-old man-made wall? A wall built by the same people as many other sites found across the world? we find such possibilities highly compelling. We have often postulated that many of the ancient sites found all over the world, regardless of permitted academic study, are actually surviving remnants of a once highly advanced civilization now lost within the history of Earth. These exquisitely as yet unexplained structures were, we feel, strategic vantage points, once built for defensive purposes, later exploited for this advantage by civilizations now academically claimed as the creators. As the generations passed within these ancient cradles, the memory of these inhabitations predictably faded. Thus, these sites, for intimidation purposes, slowly became attributed to the leaders of the tribes, which now resided within. Many of these modern impostors, predictably meeting their demise within less than a century as modern history was formed, each succumbing to invasion by a slightly more capable group. We feel, on top of the mounting evidence, suggesting that these structures are far too advanced for their modern attributed creators. These invasions are additional evidence of these sites being re-inhabited, rather than once created, understood, and maintained by the actual builders. Many of these ancient sites, we feel, were indeed the cradle of the many, more modern, well-studied, academically claimed constructors. These sites becoming modern tourist attractions, many eroding away to a ruin. However, some, placed within suitable locations for modern suburban development and of such enormous monumental size that, regardless of their unexplainable constructions, have survived, slowly becoming engulfed within the modern world, with academia hoping that they continue to be overlooked by a busy populace. The ancient Acropolis of Alatri within modern-day Italy being one such site. 
This Acropolis was indeed once the ancient cradle for a lucky few who stumbled upon and realized the potential of this enormous walled-in location built with forgotten and now unexplained polygonal masonry techniques. Who built the Cyclopean Wall, which creates the Acropolis of Alatri? How did they build it? Why does academia ignore such monumental feats of ancient, unexplained architectural engineering? We find the Wall of Alatri highly compelling. In a small, cold region of Russia named Aragulsky sits a gigantic stone structure. It is a wall made from stone not local to the area. Humongous slabs of rock rest neatly stacked on top one another. It is known as a Cyclopean wall. Cyclopean masonry is the ancient unknown technique used for laying huge stone walls. Specifically found in Mycenaean architecture built with massive limestone boulders, roughly fitted together with minimal clearance between adjacent stones and no use of mortar. Specialists from around the world have visited the wall and examined it, resulting in split opinions as to what it could be. Some say it is a natural formation, while others say it is artificial. The fact that the stone used to form the wall is not found locally has left those attempting to argue it was formed naturally in a tough spot. While the specialists that have examined the wall and concluded it was built by hand are in just as tough a spot when it comes to trying to perceive human beings accomplishing such a feat. The stones within the Cyclopean wall show signs of many years of erosion, they also show evidence of impact from past cataclysm. Was the wall built by giants? It is an outlandish argument on the surface, however, many ancient ruins appear to have even been designed for use of people far larger than we are today. In fact, Peru holds so much supportive evidence for this, it has been popularly renamed in certain circles of study as the land built by giants. The giant steps of Machu Picchu is but one of Peru's many examples of what appears to be ancient ruins of a land built for giants. Numerous ancient artwork depict rulers as giants, towering over their subjects. Were these drawings accurate? Were these giant beings a part of an alien race, like so many ancient cultures teach, such as the still existing but ancient Dogon cultures of Africa? With their intimate knowledge of the Sirius star system, they tell of a race of giant reptilian beings bringing gifts to Earth, such as hops. If this was the case however, where are their remains? We are capable of lifting huge weights with the use of our advanced technologies. But the ancient civilizations are said to have lifted these huge stone megaliths found across the world, without advanced technology. I struggle to see how.